Hello mushroom lovers and welcome to the mushroom room. Today we're going to build a laminar flow hood for only $100. It won't win you any prizes for beautiful design, but it's highly effective and it just works. One of the most important things when growing mushrooms at home is to keep your environment contaminant free. After all, we want to grow spawn bags and fruiting blocks and not just bags of green or black mold. The most common ways to do this is to either use a still air box or a laminar flow hood. Still air boxes can be effective in creating a clean environment, but operating in them can be a real challenge and requires a lot of technique. Also, cleaning them can be a pain. Working in front of a laminar flow hood gives you a much more natural working environment, but they can be expensive. Reasonably sized laminar flow hoods start from around 700 bucks and only go up from there. That's a big investment for a small hobby grower. Sure, you can get some cheap ones from Etsy, but either they don't use real HEPA filters or they're so small that working in front of them effectively for grow bags just isn't practical. So let's spend a few hours to make our own and save a ton of money. Here's our shopping list. Most importantly, you need a good HEPA filter. I used the LV Pure 131 replacement filter. They cost around $30 in a two pack from Amazon. Then we need a storage bin, which is large enough to fit both of the helper filters comfortably. I got this one from Target. This eight inch inline booster duct fan from AC Infinity works really well, provides really stable airflow and it is quiet. And the controller lets you fine tune the airflow so that you can achieve laminar flow. To glue it all together, I used some 100% silicon caulking. You can get a tube from Lowe's or Home Depot for around $9. For tools, I highly recommend using an 8 inch hole saw. You don't strictly need it, but it makes the whole project a lot easier. Then you need a utility knife, a caulking gun, power drill and either a dremel or a small saw to cut the opening into the storage bin. Here are all of the materials. Of course I will leave the links for all of the materials in the video comments so that you don't have to search for them. We will begin by marking the outlines of the HEPA filter onto the storage bin lid with a sharpie. Then we're going to take the lid outside and cut out the opening for the helper filters. I used a Dremel for this one, but of course you can use a saw for it too. This is what the lid will look like. If the edges are rough like on my bin lid here, then you can use a utility knife and smoothen that out. Now we're going to cut an eight inch hole into the storage bin. The best way of doing this is using a hole saw. Stay at least half an inch away from the edge of the bin and take your time with this step. Otherwise you risk cracking the bin. You can easily remove the leftover plastic debris with a utility knife or a file. Now we can put everything together. We'll start by installing the fan in the housing. Make sure that you orient the fan so that it blows air into the storage bin. This is indicated by the arrows on the fan housing. Mark the screw holes with a sharpie. Drill the holes into the storage bin. and secure the fan in place with the screws. Next, we need to caulk all of the air gaps, starting with the ones around the fan. The easiest way to make a good seal here is to caulk both the inside and the outside.
And next, you guessed it already, we're going to use more silicon caulking to secure the HEPA filters in place. We're going to do the inside first, then we're going to have to wait a day or so for the caulking to dry. And then the next day we can also do the outside in case there are any more air gaps. After the silicone has completely dried, we're almost ready to put everything together. Please don't be alarmed by this out looking dog in the background. She has been fed and got plenty of cuddles and treats today, but she can be a bit of a drama queen. Next, we're going to cut a little notch into the storage bin for the power cord. And after we've put everything together and sealed it up with more silicone, we can finally turn on our new flow hood. Now the last thing we'll need to do is to adjust the fan speed and make sure that the flow hood produces laminar flow and not turbulent flow. We can easily check that by using a lighter and holding it close to the filter. See the flickering over here? That means the fan speed is too strong and the flow hood will produce turbulent flow and not laminar flow. Dial it back a little bit to get a steady flame and contaminant free airflow. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video and would like to see more content on growing gourmet mushrooms at home, please like and subscribe. See you next time.